All right, hello, hello. Oh God, Ugh. I'm sorry, I am. Um... Welcome to the Shark Stream. My name's Gage, aka Acid Shark. It's Thursday, it's a normal Thursday, which means it's time for Five Fantasy Fortune. I ate spicy noodles. <laughs> and listen, I'm a guy who likes the spice. I'm a guy who is generally ah, fairly confident in his ability to handle his spice. About as confident as a mid-30s white guy can be. Whoa. So I got, um... I got the, uh, Samyang brand, uh, Bulldog Spicy Chicken Instant Noodles. And oh golly, that's a tingle! Oh, my nose is running too now. Oh boy. Whoa. Oh god. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be just fine. Oh fuck. I'm gonna eat some more. It's really good. <laughs> so today we are going to be continuing... Mm. We're gonna be continuing the Stormblood MSQ. We are moving into the late patches, which Stormblood was from the era where, and really, I think there's only like, I think there's only one patch that kind of bucks this trend, but Stormblood comes from an era where the way that it worked is that the first three or so patches were a, um, fuck, give me a second. Whew. The first three or so patches were kind of an epilogue to the story, following up on plot threads and basically kind of closing out the the greater tale in question. In Heaven's Word, that meant wrapping up the Dragon Song War. In Stormblood, that meant wrapping up things in Kugane. And, uh, just sort of, like, kind of hard confirming that, yes, both Kugane and, Ra and uh, Giribanya are now independent of Garlean rule. <laughs> now, the final two patches, the 0 .4, 0 .5, sometimes up to 0 .55 patches, are generally a prologue <coughs> leading into the next expansion. So, things in like 2.4, 2.5 ultimately led into Heavensward. 3.4, 3.5 ultimately led into Stormblood. Which means we're now moving into the patches. Oh, God. Oh, excuse me. We're now moving into the patches that are going to be leave leading into 5.0, aka Shadowbringers. So we're going to be setting up. There's there's going to be some big setup moments. You will know them when you see them. They are pretty major moments over the course of these patches that you're going to see and just going to be like, wait, what the fuck is going on here? We're also going to be following up on some, like, additional mysteries introduced in the patches. Um, and mostly closing out, uh, still closing out stuff from Stormblood, but the big thing is we're leading into Shadowbringers now. Now me, I'm very excited about this. I think if you ask a lot of people... Also, hi, Lila. I think if you ask a lot of people who played FF14, Heavensward may be the award-winning expansion. But in terms of which expansion 
people like the most, just kind of across the board. I would say Shadowbringers is kind of the big one. Shadowbringers is the one where a lot of really interesting things happen. We meet a lot of really interesting characters. And there's some big, big reveals. And just simply because of the nature of Shadowbringers, it can do a lot more interesting things not uh, dependent on everything that came before it. I like Animal Walker the most myself. Chat, this isn't about you, Selma. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know that I've necessarily seen a lot of people who have said that they outright hate Shadowbringers. Like, for me, Dawn Trail is personally my favorite expansion out of any of them. Like, in part of the- I don't know how much of that is recency bias. I'm gonna need to wait until we hit 8.0 to know for sure, probably. But, even then, I would say that Shadowbringers still ranks pretty high for me. Shadowbringer, there's just so much. I met one who didn't like SHB. Well, no accounting for taste. <laughs> but there's so much interesting shit that happens in Shadowbringers, and I'm excited to get to it. Uh, what else been going on? Um, I've kind of been coming down off of finishing The Hobbit yesterday. I don't know if I necessarily talked about this um, at any point, but someone finally also gets new clothes. It's true. Yeah, I did, f I did finish The Hobbit yesterday. I don't know if I talked about this at any point. The Hobbit is one of those games... I'm going to eat more of these extremely spicy noodles and just ruin my ability to continue talking. Give me a moment. Mm. But... <clears throat> the Hobbit was a game that I had seen advertised for years. Well, not years. Probably like a year. Regardless... It came out during a time where I was, like, still getting, like, Nintendo Power subscriptions or, like, gate or, like, comic books and stuff like that. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Here's the wild... Here's... Here's the Kingdom Link fell down. Well, a bunch of my Amiibo fell down, but I just noticed that one. Um, and it was one of those games that I'd always been kind of curious about. Because it's just, like, what does this look like? A Hobbit game released when the Peter Jackson trilogy movies for Lord of the Rings were coming out that has absolutely nothing to do, do with those movies. So I am genuinely pretty glad that I got to play that game to completion, even if at times it was an exercise in tedium. I imagine that if I wasn't playing that on stream for the amusement of all, um, I probably would have taken it a bit slower and maybe enjoyed it more. It's hard to say for sure. Regardless, I played it, I experienced it, I never have to touch it again. And today I was kind of putting things together and getting ready for, um... Eventually doing Shadow of Mordor. Uh, here is the thumbnail for that, by the way. It's a thumbnail I put together for Shadow of Mordor. Um, I'm very excited for that. Um, <clears throat> I checked to make sure that I have the game installed and everything, and I do. Um, and just, I was like, I, I booted it up just to make sure that like there wasn't anything like additional I had to download. I have the Game of the Year edition, so it comes with everything. And like I'm just sitting there at the title screen looking at Talion's fucking face staring back at me. And I'm just thinking to myself, God, I can't wait to play this fucking game. I'm genuinely excited to play Shadow of Mordor. 
I remember having so many good times with that game. I want to eat some more of these noodles before we start. Oh, my mouth is tingly. All right. Do I like have some water? I should probably drink my water. <laughs> so last time, previously on the MSQ, prior to us doing the whole Four Lords thing. By the way, uh, I kind of delayed coming back to FF14 in part because of the issue with my PS5 controller. I did get a new one, so now I won't have to worry about <sighs> stick drift or anything like that. But prior to us doing the Four Lords, uh, oh god, fuck these noodles are spicy. Give me a sec. Oh god. Ugh. Uh, prior to us doing the Four Lords, we attempted to set up an exchange of prisoners with Garlemald, and, um... Ooh. Fucking... Kagane. It didn't go particularly well. Because some fucker... Oh, God. Who will not be named, but which rhymes with Asahi, um, <laughs> sabotage the whole thing. And we have the whole thing with Tsukiyomi. Oh, fuck. I might need to, like, get some milk. <laughs> I might need to take a second. I'm gonna go get some milk. I'll be right back, actually. Alright, I'm back. I got milk. Okay. What was I talking about? <clears throat> Hold on, let me immediately eat some more of these spicy noodles. So that I can have a fucking panic attack again. Sugiyomi. We discussed the tragedy of Yatsuyu, especially in... In the con within the context of uh, the sort of um, the the dichotomy between uh, her and um, <coughs> excuse me and um, oh god what's her name Fordola that's it um, how they are both kind of meant to be similar characters within each of the uh, parallel stories of uh, Alamigo and uh, Doma. Oh, I just got the sauce for that all over my lips. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> and then Asahi got fucking ganked, and mostly I'm upset that I didn't do it myself. But then, but then, it turned out that the the. That the entire plan to do the prisoner exchange was actually um, fairly genuine from the part of the people who were actually part of the Populares and not Asahi, who was pretending to be part of the Populares to serve the Crown Prince, which we'll get to in a second. Oh, chat blocker not up. That's right. You're right. There we go. Almost forgot. 
Um. <sighs> Try to get through this with uh, all this fucking spice on my mouth and lips. A little sun moment might happen in the stream. It might. Um. So our 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 good good boy Maxima, which is like, hey, I know this this is kind of awkward, but like, can we still? Do the prisoner exchange, maybe? Like, would you guys be cool with that? And everyone's just like, yeah, sure, man. Because Maxima is a fucking real one. Fucking love Maxima. Um, your boy Alphino decides, you know what? I'm also going to go to Garlemald. I'm a, I'm a, I'm very diplomat minded. I think I could make, so, make a difference here. So he fucks off the Garlemald with Maxima and they're shot down on the way there. Oh, excuse me, by other Garleans. Because it turns out, uh, Emperor Varus doesn't actually give a shit about the Popularis and would almost prefer that they be dead. Whew. Okay, more noodles. One second. This is like a challenge stream. I gotta get through this recap while eating spicy noodles. Ugh, put me on hot ones. <laughs> I wouldn't have a reason to go on hot ones. Why would I go on hot ones, honestly? Uh, ahem. <coughs> Are you winning, Gage? I'm doing my best. Um, and that's about where we're at. Currently... The primary, uh, primary mystery at play is the fact that Xenos appears to be alive. By what? By what? Uh, uh, profane magics. And to what end, we don't currently know. But perhaps, maybe, just maybe, we will find out. So let's get started here. Oh god, is this first cutscene voiced? It's not. Okay. You think I'm losing? No, I'm doing great! Oh, hi, Gailed. If you've come here hoping for news, I'm afraid there isn't any. Shrug. Everything is exactly as it was. Ishtola is still investigating primals of the Far East. The is still gathering intelligence of the Imperial Provinces. And Alphano is still... Out there somewhere. Huh? There's been no word since his first scheduled report, nor does he respond to calls, and all the while I'm just meant to sit around here waiting. It's driving me mad. Begging your pardons, I bear a message from the Eorzean Alliance. Huh? Thank the gods for that. We have a visitor. Sup, bro? Welcome to the Rising Stones. If you have a message, I should be most eager to hear it. I'm gonna eat. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, these are some saucy noodles. We got some saucy nudes here on the shark stream. Spicy, spicy, saucy nudes. <clears throat> My lady, the Alliance leadership will soon convene to discuss the matter of Asian interference. They humbly request the presence of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Ugh. I'm, a, I'm Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Having assessed intelligence provided by the Alamega Resistance concerning the whereabouts of Xenos' remains, they too suspect Asian involvement and wish to deliberate a suitable course of action. As for the foremost authorities, our foe, your orders, council, uh, would be most welcome. I'm almost done with these noodles. These are really good. I don't know if I can ever eat them for lunch on a work day, though. I think that would just be a terrible idea. Well, the flavor is really nice. Huh. Of course, we should be glad to assist in whatever way we can. With all of everyone else field, I'd say this one falls to us. For which I mean, I'm not going on my own. You'll come with me, I trust. <coughs> of course I will. Okay. 
There you have it. We accept the invitation. Thank you. The time and date of the meeting will be shared in due course, but I can confirm that the castle will take place at Alabigo. By your leave. Hello, Lucas! I'm doing my best to get through commentary and dialogue while eating extremely spicy noodles. Ugh. I'm having a rough go of it. Ugh. I know. I so oh, fuck. Hold on. I somehow doubt we'll have anything useful to offer, but standing mutely at a meeting would still be better than the, no than the nothing I've been doing of late. Let's make ready to part, shall we? Sounds nice. They're good noodles. It's just fucking ow. Thankred. Thankred. <coughs> Excuse me. What's going on, man? Oh, real. All right, just be careful on the road back. You hear? What news? Did I hear right, Riol? Is Thagrid coming back? Aye, that he is. Says he's acquired some important intelligence. Ugh. I decided Natalie was watching... Oh, God. Natalie was watching a video where a bunch of chefs were raiding different instant noodles. They were doing kind of like a blind taste test. Where they were just given the prepared noodles and uh, gave their opinions on them. Based on, like, taste and texture. And the Bulldog Spicy Chicken Ramen uh, from Sanyan came up. And it looked really good. And the way they were describing it sounded really good. And I like some, I like me some spicy, spicy noodles, let me tell you. I'm a... I'm a connoisseur of spice. And I was just like, fuck, I could I should try that. Oh. And the spice does not disappoint. Whew. I got a five pack of this shit. <laughs> I may need to space out when I eat them. Which really just means I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it. You know? Ooh, golly. All right. I was kind of surprised. They they rated the Marachan pretty high. Like, they said it had, like, good flavor and it had, like, good texture. I was surprised because, I because like, Marachan's one of the cheaper brands. You know, usually you would uh, associate cheap with potentially, like, low quality... But it's nice to know that's not really that it's low quality. It's just it's priced. Let's give it a oh, fuck it. <clears throat> give it a very re <coughs> reasonable price. Oh, I need the milk. Oh, I might have to like upgrade to ice cream if this doesn't go away. You know, it's 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 nice, you know. I'm not, I'm not really one for Marichan, honestly. It's not my favorite. I find the I find the flavor very simple. I usually go for the beef ramen personally, <sighs> and I'll generally have to mix something into it. Being someone who enjoys his spice, something that I used to do was I used to get extra Diablo sauce packets from Taco Bell and mix that in because, like, you know, if you're eating cheap ramen, you might as well. Might as well go all the way with, like, Making it as budget as possible. Oh, am I getting lightheaded? I might need to get some water. Ugh. I'm gonna message one of my housemates and see if they can get me some water. Oh boy. Real. 
Anyone anyway, available to grab me a bottle of water real quick? All right. <coughs> Being a guardian territory, though, he couldn't risk sharing particulars in case the appearance were listed in. So he said he. So he said he said he'd head back as quick as he could, to make sure someone was waiting for him in the Alamingan quarter. Understood. I, Gail, and I will go. Yeah, we're already going over there anyway. We're bad for Alamigo anyway. There's sure to be some time before the council begins. Come on, let's be off. <sighs> noodles are really winning. I will not let the noodles win! <clears throat> okay. Ugh. To the Amiga Quarter. Ooh, boy. Alright. Mm. I think it's calming down a bit. Oh, God, excuse me. Uh. Oh, no, we need to. We need to update that. Hold on. We're in the Alamingan Quarter. Come on, you need to address appropriately, Hazel. Oh, God, excuse me. And away we go. Anchored. <coughs> There's no doubting your talent for espionage, but the journey is long. The border's heavily guarded. You did well to make it back in one piece. If I wasn't sick, I'd go get, get some in the store. You two are sorry for sore eyes. Now all I need is water for my parched throat. Fetch me a cup, will you? Trapes through Imperial territory. It's thirsty work. I'm definitely going to need, like, some tubs or something as well. Oh, this seems voiced. Is this voiced? Please be voiced. I need to take a moment. Oh, thank God. God, I needed that. I won't bother telling you to catch your breath. Whatever brought you galloping back to us, I assume it's urgent. Quite. Without further ado, then. After the successful uprisings in Doma and Alamigo, rebels in several other provinces were inspired to follow suit. Unfortunately, they did not fare quite so well. The Dalmascans paid the heaviest price. For their defiance, the Emperor made a show of raising their capital to the ground, prompting many of their neighbors to abandon thoughts of resistance. But not all have given up on liberty. Heartened by the news of Doma's prisoner exchange, some still believe that the Empire may one day be amenable to negotiation. We have the Shinobi to thank for spreading the good word. They have worked tirelessly to keep the subjugated informed, and a little knowledge can go a long way. There is at least a spark of hope, then. A spark in want of kindling, yes. The Alliance has already begun supplying materiel to resistance movements abroad many of whom would otherwise struggle to continue the fight. The support effort has been led by the Sultana and the Elder Seedseer, who have both seen enough Alamegan refugees to know the consequences of oppression. And for their troubles, they have quickly earned a reputation as folk heroes in certain corners of the Empire. That is all for the provinces. As for the Garlean motherland itself, our friends, the Populares, have suffered something of a setback, I regret to say. Talk is rife that Doma has summoned a primal, and the Empire's more liberal voices are being drowned out in the fearful clamor for retribution. And who did they think orchestrated this summoning? <laughs> oh, any but those truly responsible. Xenos has seen to that. Speaking of whom... The Crown Prince is recovering remarkably well. 
Well enough, in fact, to enable him to personally tour the provinces, putting the fear of the Emperor into the hearts of any would-be dissident. He walks in plain sight, and none suspect him. Then it's as we feared. Yes. An Assian wears his skin. Gross. But it was not that which brought me here in such haste. During my time in the provinces, I learned many things. Yet at no point did I hear any report of a Doman emissary in the capital. But Albano should have arrived by now. Could they be holding him there in secret? The possibility did cross my mind, but I have reason to believe he never reached his destination. As you know, Scions assigned to covert operations, such as Riol and myself, are issued special link pearls for communication in the event of an emergency. I mention this because it was originally Alfino's task to coordinate the response at headquarters, meaning he has one. And whose voice should I hear when mine recently crackled to life? You spoke with Alfano? Spoke with? No. I but heard his voice, and none too clearly at that. Two words were all I could make out. The burn. The wasteland on the edge of Othard. Something must have happened to them there. There's no time to waste. We must make for the burn at once. Ali say we have so much shit we still need to do. I had a feeling you might say that. There are other things going on. I can't very well sit around here drinking tea if Alphano's in trouble. You said yourself that this link pill was only to be used in emergencies. <clears throat> so I'm going, and that's the end of it. Oh, far be it from me to change your minds. Okay. The intense spice has kind of died down a little bit. So I think I might be able to, like, talk without, like, losing my fucking breath. I will leave the two of you to your task and try- and... It's not doing anything for me tripping over my words, though. I will leave the two of you to your task and see to my own. Ugh. Loath though I am to neglect making preparations for the council, we must act swiftly before Alphano's trail goes cold. I propose we first pay Hien a visit. He's sure to want to hear about these developments, and he may well be able to advise us how best to reach the burn. A sound plan. And Ishtola is in Doma, is she not? I dare say she'd join you in the search if you asked her nicely. While you see to all that, I shall go and report my findings to the Alliance. You may leave any preparations to the council to me. Okay. Thank you, Thancred. Right, to Doma, then. We have much and more to share with Yishtola. As much as I would like to visit Doma, I will have to wait. Twelve speed, you on your way. Oh, and give my regards to Yishtola. Alright, Hazel, we're gonna... I, I know I just... I know I just changed you. But we're gonna be heading back. So we gotta just... just real quick... So we've reached the part of the year where, oh yeah, nice fucking try. I'm not, I'm not teleporting to the mercantile docks. You can bring me right to the Enclave. Anyway, son of a bitch. We've reached the part of the year, oh well, we got an ad going. I'll just give it some time before, I'll, I'll wait until the ad's done to... Continue. Ah, fuck. All right. You stole her.
<laughs> hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? Hmm, that is curious indeed. While other matters demand my attention at present, I shall bear what you have told me in mind. Should you notice any change, do not hesitate to seek me out. Thank you, my lady. You are most kind. Bow. Ugh. Excuse me. Smile. Well, well. Two faces from the dim and distant past. Come now, it hasn't been that long. Who was that you were speaking with? A local miner who supplies crystals for the rebuilding effort. Of late, he claims to have struggled to find a crystal with so much as a trace of elemental energy. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Upon learning that I had some knowledge of ether, he came seeking my counsel. Just now, he brought me one of his recent finds. It was precisely as he described, devoid of elemental energy, and eerily reminiscent of the de-aspected de crystals that manifested in Eorzea in the days prior to the clean to the calamity. In the days prior to the calamity, we would be wise to investigate this phenomenon more closely. Indeed, but on a more positive note, the locals seem to have taken a liking to you. Shrug. More an interest in than a liking to, I think. The sight of a Mikote with a particular contraption upon her head is a certain novelty value in these parts. Any actual regard they may have for me, I owe wholly to you and the others who came before me. Everyone here has been exceedingly cooperative, and I am pleased to report that I have all but concluded my investigation. Simply put, by focusing one's will upon an ether-infused object of worship, it is possible to conduct a summoning. Aww. So the fact that they are objects of worship is the key. They are themselves suffused with a requisite belief. Uh-huh. Correct. Such sacred relics as the Kojin Collect obviate the need for religious fervor in the summoner, Yatsuyu being the most obvious example. She had but to associate the artifact given to her by Asahi with the divine, and it served to amplify her desires and give them form. A form nourished to the power of crystals, also provided by her brother, and thus was Tsukiyomi brought into being. Which brings me to the question of preventative measures, to which I have yet to find a satisfactory answer. At present, I know of naught that will avail us, save to keep watch over the movement of relics and crystals, as if we did not have enough to keep watch over already. Uh-huh. But I doubt you came all this way to hear that which may be perused in a report. Has something happened to Alphano? It's funny you mention that. Bunny bunny, but nunny, but nunny, but noy, bunny bunny, 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 but nunny, bunny bunny. Hmm. I shall join you in the search, of course. Thank you, Ishtola. I should be glad of your help, truly. Now, if there's nothing else, I shall go on ahead and request an audience with Lord Hian. And there she goes. Alice puts on a brave face, but she has little talent for concealment. We should join her at the Kian Khan. Okay. Where he is expecting you, may I show you in? Yeah, man. Sup, fucker? You Gary, hey girl, hey, how you doing? I should not have allowed Master Alphano to leave without an escort. But it avails us not to dwell on the past. We must focus on what can be done now. Hello, Kale. But is Lord Ian expecting this? Does a kickflip. There you are. I've apprised Hien of the situation. My report can wait. Finding Alphano must take priority. Greetings, my friend. Alice has explained all to me. Needless to say, you shall have our full cooperation in the search. Even if Alpino's trail does lead to the burn of all places. Na, 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 na. Feel the burn. Hien is mulling over the details of Alpino's Link Pearl call. I don't think I. Since most of the trials for the Stormblood patches are relegated to the Four Lords 
quest line. I don't think we've got any more trials for the rest of the MSQ. I'm pretty sure it's all just dungeons which are going to be set up with... Um... Oh, duty support. So we shouldn't need to worry about uh, needing to form up any parties. I'll check the wiki, but I think you're right. You know, it's kind of funny. I started thinking on that before you actually asked, so I just noticed that you asked it. <laughs> the region known as the Burn occupies a special place in Garlean history. Every child in the Empire is familiar with the tale. In the distant past, it was a verdant land teeming with life, but successive summoning saw it bled dry of ether and reduced to a desert. It was upon beholding the devastation that primals had wrought that Emperor Solus was spurred to embark upon his crusade against their kind. Sure he was. Oh, we don't know that yet, technically speaking. The burn offers a glimpse of the future we seek to prevent. Know you of any reason why Alpha Gnome might have gone there? Aye, mischance. Though it lies on the route to Galamal, it is no place to make a stop. My guess is they encountered some animal, man, 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 some mammal, some manner of trouble there. In any event, I am of the same mind as Alice. We have no choice but to take our search to the burn. Given the considerable distances involved, tis best we went by bird. Gonna go by beard. I gold and I have our yoles. Yugiri, will you ready falcons for the others? I shall gather our swiftest birds. Near the House of the Fierce, there is an overlook. Pray join us there once you have seen to your preparations. Okay. House of the Fierce. Crack of my wrists. I think, is this the first post-patch? No, it's not. Is it? Hold on. There was, oh, wait, uh... I think the last one was the first one post-patch, wasn't it? Last one we did? When did 7.1 come out? How recent was that? It was the 12th. Took that week off. That week was Thanksgiving. No, this isn't the first. This isn't the first post patch. This is only the second post patch stream we've done, I think. Whew. My stomach feels warm because of all the spice, I think, <laughs> from those from those noodles. I think this is the first stream where I've had Igailed with this hairstyle, though. I actually updated this recently. Um, new patches generally means that they add more available hairstyles to the Viera, in addition to adding brand new hairstyles for everybody. New hair and new glam. I think I had the same one last time. This is just the this is just the gear she's wearing. Honestly, this is this doesn't have a glam on it right now. We should probably, like, go. I, I know why I, I know why, hold on. I know why for some reason I thought this was the first stream post-patch. Because it's the first stream since I've actually done Vanadil, the the first FF11 crossover raid, which is pretty good. Like that's a it's a it's a pretty fun uh, raid, honestly. I rather enjoyed it. 
outside of what I was spoke what I was uh, speaking about the other day with regards to like that one like passive aggressive person from the last time I played it. We're coming for you, Alphano. Having named him an emissary of Doma, Lord Hian considers himself personally responsible for Master Alphano's safety. Not I could say would sway him from joining the search. With such a steed to bear me to and fro, I could perform my field work in a fraction of the time. Mayhap I shall try my hand at this Bardom's medal. I think you'd kill it, Ishtola, honestly. If everyone here is here and possessed of a bird, let us away. Remember, our destination is a barren wasteland. There is no civilization to speak of for a hundred malms in all directions. Take care you do not lose your way. Dabon. Now accessible. I just... I'm just... I'm just locked into those three. I mean, that's fine. I don't know about having two red mages all, both at once, but... Make ready, friends! We are come to the burn! We are come. God, that's something I need on a soundboard. I mean, it's certainly covered in white. We have arrived at the cum wastes. The cum wastes got some beautiful music. Love the music in the cum wastes. All right, here we go. Pew 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 pew. It is time to chuck spells. I'm thinking in... I've been trying to think about um, what I want to plan for 2025 in terms of streaming. I want to see about possibly doing more like PC game streams, like seeing if my computer can handle doing all that at once. I don't expect that it would have a problem with that. Um, especially if I have, like, a two-monitor setup and I'm not trying to, like, run everything on, like, one screen. Ooh. Nice try. Um, and in thinking about that, like, I've been trying to think about, like, what games I would play. Like, to begin with. One thing that I have been wanting to do for, like, months now... Atlas stream, gotcha. I actually, genuinely, I do want to do an Atlas stream. Honestly. <clears throat> because I actually have a lot of fun with Atlas. But I think that's something that I would want to, like, probably do with, like, guests. Like, I did get... Atlas for Audrey and B. So I think if I was to do an Atlas stream, I might have them on for that. What kind of PC games like stuff your box can handle? Yeah, and my my PC is one of those ones where it's just like it's not super powerful, but like I could probably run like a 10-year-old game without like too much issue, which honestly like is what I would use it for anyway. So like just kind of as an example, um one of the things I want to do or want to get into in, like, a big way, is I want to play through um, 
the original, original Half-Life, as well as its expansions, and then do another playthrough of Half-Life 2 on PC with a fun mod added in. Huh, funny little mod, you say. Gee, I wonder what it could be. I feel like I've probably talked about what it is before. FF Pixel Remaster. I don't need a PC to do that. Also, I might... I probably would not play those. Or maybe I would. I don't know. I'm... Genuinely speaking, as, as much interest as I have in, like, various JRPGs, like... You know, I've like I've got Chrono Cross. I've I'm kind of interested in like checking out the remaster of like Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I have friends who swear by like Final Fantasy VI, that sort of thing. I or like and like I do. It has always been a plan like for a while now that I want to play through Persona Three Portable. But the problem is, is that I am I'm concerned about committing to a uh, a JRPG, you know, because like that's a, that's a time investment. JRPGs are long. Yeah, I mean, like, just look at, like, Final Fantasy XIV. How many... Like... Even ignoring the fact that I haven't always been doing, like, the MSQ, most of our FF14 streams have been me working through MSQ. And we're up in... We're up towards, like, 80 of these. Like, we're getting close to our 100th Final Fantasy XIV stream, and that's pretty neat. Oof. But, like, they're time investments, and for... And as somebody... As somebody who streams for, at most, like, two and a half to three hours on average, like, only four times a week, and I try to make each of those days a different game, um, like, that, that's a, like, there, there is potentially bound to be a point where it's just like, I don't know if I am having fun coming back to this every week, or there will be other games I want to play, like, for God's sakes, I still need to finish Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I mean, JRPGs are long, but on average, they're significantly less time-consuming than 14's MSQ. FF6, for example, is like a 20-hour story. Right, but that's still, like, a few months' worth of, of streams since we would be going at just, like, one stream of that game per week. Um... to, like, get through that game. And that's... 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 That's for games... That, and then, like... That's assuming that, like, I'm playing a game that, like, I don't need to, like, grind for. Like, I've sat in on a uh, friend of the stream, Audrey of Team Catpole, doing off-screen grinding for their Persona 3 portable playthrough in order to, like, either get out of a particular area or get to a good point that they can continue the story. Um, and it's... I'm, I wouldn't say that that sort of thing 
scares me, but it does give me pause. You know? Pobs. That I can now, I can then bap you with. I don't think you need to grind much. Especially like, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly talking just kind of in general. You know, like, I'm not talking about, like, FF6 in particular. I'm talking about JRPGs kind of on the whole. Like, especially if I'm doing, like, more classic ones. Um, like, I know that, like, a lot of remasters these days tend to have, like, kind of quality of life stuff. Like, I think Chrono Cross has, like, some quality of life stuff to avoid having to, like, really, like, nose to the grindstone with that game. I would probably want to play Chrono Trigger before Chrono Cross. But Chrono Cross is the one... Chrono Cross is the one that I have a degree of nostalgia for because I had a friend when I was a kid who got Chrono Cross and I watched them play it. Uh, so I have a degree of nostalgia for Chrono Cross. Um, but like most of the games that I play... Uh, well, for modern JRPGs, it's tend to be even more light on grind. They're designed so that the player doesn't feel like they have to stop in their tracks when focusing on the main story. Yeah, and I mean, that's good. But in a lot of cases, it does also mean that there's more story there. Like, I, I, like we really can't mince words here. JRPGs tend to be long. Like, that's just kind of the long and short of it. Like, a lot of the other games that I tend to play tend to be far shorter experiences. Like, we're talking, like first-person shooters with, like, on average, like, eight-hour campaigns, relatively speaking. You know? JRPGs, you could do off-screen just to experience it. And, yeah, like, if it's, if it's, like, a new thing where it's just, like, I want to experience this game, like, I would be okay doing that. Um, I do think there is... Uh, I should probably keep moving here. Hold on. I'm going to blast this guy with Verholi. One second. I don't think there's nothing necessarily saying that, like, I can't just experience a particular game off stream. I play games off stream all the time. Like, I definitely, I, I take so many opportunities to play games off stream that, like, I am nominally interested in. Just because, like, I know that if... If I were to... What's the word I'm looking for? It's, um... Oh, God. I'm trying to think. I'm still being affected by those... Spicy, saucy nudes. Um... I do still try to play games that I'm excited for off-stream... In order to kind of prevent myself from getting, like slimy streamer brain where it's like I determined that I it I I can't I can't just play this game I have to stream it to show my 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 unspoiled reactions and it's just like occasionally like there are games where like I have been particularly excited for them and I do want to stream them to kind of just show off my reactions to them like I did that with like Alan Wake 2 um, I did that with, uh, Alone in the Dark, that sort of thing. But, like, I played Shadow Generations off-stream entirely, because I was super excited for Shadow Generations, and I wanted to just kind of, like, keep that experience to myself, you know? God, I do want to do a replay of, of Alan Wake 2 against one of these saves. I want to play through all of the, uh... Alan Wake games, honestly, again.
Oh, hold on. What am I doing? Okay, we're done. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, all right. You can pick up one of the less demanding ones to see how it goes. I'm constantly shilling for Xenoblade, but those would be one of the last I push with them being on the lengthier side of that genre. Absolutely, yeah. Chrono Cross trigger any of the numbered Final Fantasy games after five, or some that shouldn't take more than three to four months. I'm pretty sure, but that's the thing. Like anything that is that much of a commitment is kind of a. I don't want to say it's a red flag necessarily. Like, I'm sure I would enjoy the experience, but I would hate to get to the point where it's just like, I there's something else that I want to play, something else I'm excited to play, and I have to choose something to stop playing if it seems like I am, like, going to need to stop playing something if I want to sort of, like, seize that excitement. Like, I'm going to be real, uh... How many Darksiders 2 streams have we done so far? Like this isn't this isn't specific to JRPGs. Like this could this is true of like basically any game I play. Is this the 80th stream of Final Fantasy 14 I've done? It is. It's this is stream number 80. Okay, that's cool. Like we're five streams into Darksiders 2. Darksiders 2 has a lot of like back end tedium, unfortunately, because they were running out of time and money with that game. Or I'm going to take a break from the JRPG and it's hard to get the momentum back for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm worried about continuing Darksiders 2. Because I'm just like, am I going to run out of steam for this game? And like, that's not going to be quite as much of an issue when we get to Darksiders 3. Because I know that I can blast through Darksiders 3 pretty quickly. Especially with... Um, new game plus mode and having it on a lower difficulty. So I'm, I'm not worried about Darksiders 3. But I'm worried about losing steam for Darksiders 2. Um, but yeah. I think with JRPGs, like, I would need to be able to consistently do longer streams. Are you saying you'd rather keep games longer than 12 to 14 hours for off stream? Not necessarily. It's just, it's a concern about starting something and then not being able to get around to finish it. Like, I'll admit that part of the reason I haven't got back around to finishing uh, Breath of the Wild, or even, like, did you guys know that I still have an ongoing stream of Mad Max <laughs> that I haven't finished? Because that's still technically going. I never... Like, there... I have... Hold on. Let's just uh, ban that real quick. I have a number of games that I have started streams for that I still have not finished. Let me go down the list for you real quick. Castlevania Judgment. Death Stranding. Uh, Gex 3. Deep Cover Gecko. Halo 2, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mad Max, Oblivion, uh, what else we got here? Uh, I still need to do the DLC for Splatoon 3, uh, Natalie and I haven't gotten back to Tomb Raider Anniversary, I still need to do Trapong 2! <laughs> I have a lot of stuff that I still need to finish, and it's just like part of the concern is that, like, starting up something that is, that I could potentially burn myself out on could just make that list grow bigger. I can't stand around in a dungeon. I am on a timer. <laughs> they will kick me out. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have this problem where if you play them at your leisure, they can last forever. My save of Tears is still going, human. 
Yeah, what I was getting at was that part of the reason that I actually haven't gone back to uh, Breath of the Wild or um, Mad Max is because I now feel super weird about using art of pre-hair Acid Shark. So I actually need to reach out to Jay at some point to see if he would be willing to uh, make some updates. I've been really lucky that um, a lot of the artists that I've worked with have been very accommodating with regards to making updates uh, to previous art. Um, in fact, uh, Tish, Patchwork Calico, um, who has done a bunch of art for me. Um, the art for Spider-Man games, the art for uh, my very first two Darksiders streams, um, uh, Deadly Premonition, Half-Life. Um, I actually reached out to Tish recently to ask to get a couple of pieces updated, um, specifically because I want to do those Half-Life streams in 2025, and also because I want to replay Deadly Premonition, the first one. Um, and Tish was very accommodating. Um, I have spoken with Knucklebone, who did the, uh, chat blocker art, and has also done a fair amount of art for me, actually. Um, for the Dishonored series, uh, for the Metroid games. Oh, he did something else for me recently. What did he do? I'm trying to remember. Give me a second. I'm gonna pull up... Where is my 2024 Acid Shark art? Oh, right. He did my offline screen. And he did the Resident Evil 4 uh, separate ways art. Um, oh, that's actually another thing I want to do. I want to do a timeline playthrough of the Metroid series. <laughs> Using remakes where appropriate. That one's going to take some doing, because I'm going to need to figure out the best way to do uh, Samus Returns. I own that game, so legally speaking, I should be good to, like, use a ROM if I have to. But it's unfortunate that... Oh, hold on. I fucked that up. One second. But, like, I just think that would be fun. There's part of me that's like holding off on doing that just on the on the off chance that Nintendo announces like uh uh a Metroid Prime 2 remaster. Hold on. But yeah, for for the for the Metroid series, like I really, I genuinely love the piece that uh, Knucklebone did for that. It's probably one of my favorite pieces, and he's been really, really accommodating with like making updates to it. Um, and just before he like stopped taking commissioned work. Uh, in order to, like, focus on, like, getting a day job and stuff like that and uh, start, like, focusing on personal art, um, he did one more update where he added in hair so that I could use it now uh, that I've, like, made that particular update to Acid Shark's design.
And I want to make this clear, when I say that, like, someone's accommodating, I don't want it to sound like the only reason I think it's accommodating is because, like, they did the work for free. Um, because actually, I th think... Oh, was I charged for the update to the Metroid art? I think I was. I do know artists that have made those updates for free for me, and I really appreciate that. But it's really just, when I say accommodating, I mean the fact that they're willing to do it at all. Like, generally speaking, if an artist asks me for, like, payment to, like, make an update to an older piece, that is something I am 100% willing to do. Because, like, what am I going to do? Like, not pay someone for their work? What kind of fucking shithead would do something like that? Not this shithead. Because I'm not a shithead. This motherfucker looks like a lobster. Look at that. This is fucking lobster ass lobster. I think I've fully recovered from the noodles. <laughs> Oh god, I got hiccups now. now. I'm trying to think about like what other PC games like I would want to do. Because generally the concern is that I don't want to, like, overdo it, you know? I don't want to do so much that, like, it overloads my computer and just the stream is just like a slideshow. So, like, among other things, I would probably need to, like, test how that works out prior to actually doing any PC streaming. And I want to start doing that, like, with my New Year's stream. Like, I've got a, I've got a plan for what, oh. I've got a plan that I'm actually pretty excited for with regards to my New Year's stream. The New Year's stream is always one of my, like, favorite things to do, honestly. I just, I always like having fun with that. I'm not sure what the, uh... Exact nature of the New Year's stream is going to be this year. Because prior to last year, I'd always done, like, play, play a game all the way through and time it so that, like, it ends at midnight. Which, like, as a concept is fine, you know? Let's 
second. I'm going to focus on this real quick. I exhausted myself from talking so much. <laughs> Let's go ahead and focus on finishing up this dungeon before we get into any more details about like any future plans. I think it's a combination of me, like, suffering so much at the start of the stream trying to get through that bowl of noodles. And then just me, like, doing all this talking where it's just like, oh, I'm tired now. I'm exhausted. Go for something a bit more in the center of mass here. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. I think the boss is just, like, right here. Yep. Oh, I remember this one being weird, actually. Is this a weird one? This might be a weird one.
That is a fucked up looking dog. Missed dragon? I didn't miss it. It's right there. Thank you for coming to my stream. Dragon dissolves into mist. Guys, Bad spot. Nope. Dragon disappears into the mist. The dragon is poised to swoop. Oh yeah, there it goes. Is there an invisible wall on this? I actually don't know. I'm not about to test it. Actually, I probably already tested it by, like, doing a backflip into it, honestly. Definitely not an FF4 reference. Is it an FF4 re I don't know these things. What did she say? I, didn't, I couldn't read it. Please be safe, Alpha No. Dragons and Alagon ruins were seldom a coincidence. That there in the distance. That dragon was as much mist as it was flesh. 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 Flesh.
Between contending with bloodthirsty beasts and sand in my every conceivable place, I'm quite ready to leave this wasteland. But first things first. Do you see the crashed ship over yonder? Judging by its class, it must be the vessel that bore Master Alphino away. More Machina. It would seem they were involved in a struggle. There may be clues. We should split up and search the area. There's no sign of Alphano, nor of Maxima and his people. Hmm, these were no ordinary soldiers. The insignia on this man's uniform identifies him as one of the Emperor's personal guard. Hand-picked soldiers, answering only to the royal family. That would explain why all the casualties are Garlean. They were fighting their own. You're saying the Emperor was behind all this? That Alphano is his prisoner? Who could have seen this coming? We don't know that yet. Aye, we must not jump to conclusions. Besides, Alphino is more than capable of looking after himself, is he not? Uh, questionably so. I suggest we return to Doma to consider our options. Whatever happened here, Master Alphino is long gone, and any subsequent search may safely be left in the hands of the Shinobi. I'm imagining an alternate version of this where Hian's just like, Master Alphino is more than capable of taking care of himself, is he not? And it, like, cuts to Alice and she's just like, Oh god, we have to find Alphino right now. <laughs> Where in the world are you, brother? If you die on me, I will never let you hear the end of it. Where in the world is Alphano Levier? He's over there somewhere. All right. Forgive me, I need a moment. On present evidence, we have no reason to fear the worst. More than that, I cannot say. We are no closer to establishing Master Alphano's whereabouts, and the suggestion of an Imperial plot only compounds matters. We have much to consider. Well, that was a decidedly uneventful journey. I almost found myself hoping for a sandstorm. Joking aside, I'd say our birds are due a good brush down and, and a treat or two, wouldn't you? Absolutely. They deserve little treat. Shadows in the Empire. The Hedgehog? Hien has a request for the Scions. I had hoped to steal a moment's rest after our little outing, but it would seem duty calls, for an emissary arrived in my absence. Do not let us keep you then. Actually, 
I was wondering if you might join me. I cannot think of a guest who could fail to be impressed by the presence of the Scions. At least, none I should be happy to receive. Of course, if you think it will be useful. Thank you. Let us return to my manor, then. Lord Hian is expecting you. May I show you in? Yeah, sure, man. Oh, hey, Lise. Lise, what brings you here? Hey girl, hey, how you doing? Oh, Alliance business. We have a request for Doma. Well, he and. But that can wait. They told me you were out searching for Alphino. Did you manage to pick up his trail? Now, bunny, bunny, but nanny, but nanny, but noy, bunny, bunny, nubby, dumb, bunny, nubby, nubby. Well, if he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. And we will. Alphino embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma, and I hold myself responsible for his safe return. I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. Oh, she's going to kick his ass. <laughs> well, someone has to do it. I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm not sure about, though. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphino's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? Because he hates them, probably. They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family. The crown prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a dormant citizen had violated the terms of our agreement, that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, someone is manipulating matters from the shadows. Most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. The servants of Chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters. But come, Lys. You have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. So the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Eorzean Alliance. To make it official, and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together, and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. 
I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. For everyone. All right. While we are happy to cooperate with the Aurora's in Alliance, there are many things that Doma must do alone. Yeah, right. Don't worry. Halpano has been through countless trials and come out stronger every time. He'll be back. I'm sure of it. Yugiri assures me the task of searching is best left to her comrades. I shall trust her their experience and focus on what I can do. That the Alliance would extend an invitation to Doma bespeaks the depth of their concern. Nor are they misguided. Garlemald has fallen under Astian control. The threat we face is incalculable. My advisors and I will presently convene to discuss the matter of Doma's defenses. You're welcome to stay, of course. Had you not offered, I would have requested leave to remain. Where the Asians are concerned, not may be left to chance. As ever, we would benefit from your experience. I thank you for coming, Lise, even if it was on official business. I had hoped there might be time to show you the land you helped to save, but I will settle for a fleeting visit if needs must. There never does seem to be enough time for anything, does there? But I did get to see a little of the Enclave. You've made excellent progress, I must say. And soon you'll have the chance to see how we're getting on, too. Till the meeting, then. Um, I Guild. I was wondering if I might have a word with you before I go. In private? Aww. Go on, my friend. I will send for Hakuro and the others in the meantime. Yeah, okay. Great, I'll wait for you at the docks. Okay. Go on and see what Lise wants. I promise we won't be begin without you. Speak with Lise in the Doman Enclave. Leave the Kian Khan. They need to make more cities that you can use mounts in. Why can't I bust out the Regalia Type G in so Solution 9, hmm? Hi, Lise. Hey, girl, hey, how you doing? Bunny, bunny, banani. Thanks for coming. Knowing you, you've probably guessed what I wanted to talk about. Nope. No, got no idea. Ali say. She's acting as if, other as if everything... <laughs> Fuck. Ali say. She's acting as if everything's alright, but it's clear she's barely coping. Mm. The Ali say I know is overbearing, willful, and reckless, and that's fine. It's how she deals with feeling weak. She has to keep moving or she's afraid she'll fall apart. A lot like me. But the thing about people like us is that we need someone to keep an eye on us. I had Papalimo, and now I have my friends in the Resistance. And Ali say has you in the Scions. Before you start, I'm not saying you're neglecting her. I'm sure you aren't, and I'm sure you won't. But she's a good friend, and when I see her like this, I can't help worrying. So please, make sure you give her all the support she needs, alright? Leave it to me! Hey, okay. hey. Thank you, Igeld. Goes without saying, but if there's anything I can do, you only need to ask. Well, I'd best be off. See you in Alamigo. Oh, now I gotta get all the way back over to the Kian God. It's making me run all the fucking way over this goddamn 
little island town thing enclave yeah let's go let's fucking go let's fucking go hey everybody is everything all right with lease i'm gonna ask for details so i know you'd let tell me if it were important i dare say i can guess the subject of your discussion with lease she too was never one for concealment Fortunately for you, the individual in question seems none the wiser. Your return is most timely. We have just surprised those newly arrived of where matters stand. Hakudo! We all had our suspicions from the start, but a part of me was credulous enough to believe the Empire's promises. Never again. The Imperial Court is a nest of vipers, and any peace they offer is laced with poison. Hell yeah. Ah, there you are, my friend. Everyone is assembled, so let us begin. Okay. Is this one going to be voice too? How nice are they going to be to me today? Ready yes. Ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, you giddy and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suino Sato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmasca. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soi, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships. Lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some Alagan ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, yeah, Ali say you were unusual. there. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. Azizla was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof, but the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. All right, but even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it?
Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. Good job, idiots. If an imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel as the crow flies over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. Hmm. A source of energy. Tell me. Did the Alligans make a habit of launching things into the sky? Probably. A curious question. Besides Azaz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. No shit. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. To the Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whether this road leads? Yeah, we might as well. I'm sure nothing of note will happen in that area. There definitely won't be any iconic scenes that will play out. Can't imagine that ever happening. Sorry, I'm like combing my ponytail at the same time. <laughs> if I if I seem kind of far away from the mic, it's because I'm leaning back to take care of it. <laughs> yeah, all right. We have fought long and sacrificed much to reclaim our freedom. I will die before I allow the Empire to take it from us again. Okay, man. The reigning ruby princess is more receptive to the outside world than her predecessor, it is true. But what we offer is an invitation to war. Though I will plead our case, I fear we can expect little of Sui no Sato. The Azim Step. I always wanted to see it. Well, you're coming with us. In the field of etherology, the Azim Steppe remains unbroken ground. Having missed your last expedition through injury, I mean to seize this opportunity with both hands. Power and slumber. Hien is eager to set out for the Azim Steppe. It is settled, then. I will journey to the Azim Steppe with the Scions. Yugiri and Hakudo, I leave our other neighbors to you. Okay, okay. Mitty, what are you doing over there? She's lurking. My apologies, but I won't be joining you. Qua? I'm no etherologist, and what skills I do possess are unlikely to be of any great use to the mission. But more importantly, it seems to me that the ruins and the burn warrant attention. And so, while you are away securing an energy source, I will engage our friends at Garland Ironworks to undertake a complete overhaul of the field generators. We'll need them in good working order if our plan is to succeed. I trust there are no objections. Come on, I say, could you not get to Taru to do it? <laughs> you really want to see the Azim step? Huh, I'm sure she'd love the burn. Joking aside, I was planning to enlist her help with organizing everything. We'll still need a scion on the ground. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll manage without me. Good luck. Okay. One day, Alice will get to see the Azim step. Just the three of us, then. Very well, shall we make first for reunion? Yeah, man. Oh, I love the Azim step. It's been a hot minute since we've managed, since we've like circled back to it. But again, this is actually probably my favorite area in all of Stormblood. It's just gorgeous. It is nighttime, right? Oh, but look at that. Look at that sky. Love the steppy. Love the steppy a lot. Don't take that out of context. Hi, Hien. Hi, Ishtola. 
It is a fine feeling to be back. Were enough for our mission, I would like nothing more than to lie on the grass and watch the clouds float by. I remember the music for that one guy falling in Moonfair. <laughs> so this is the Azim step. The tales do not do it justice. You think the view is impressive here, wait until we reach higher ground. Actually, seeing as it's your first visit, permit me to show you my favorite spot. We got another voice cutscene. This seems like a voiced cutscene. Please be a voiced cutscene. You're being really nice today to me today, game. I really appreciate it. I will never tire of this vista. The endless fields, the boundless skies. Tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard, and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth and an offering of blood to the heavens. As is La and Dalamud. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise As is La up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. Limitless blue extreme, worse to grind, even unsynced. It's not that bad. It is one of the ones that, like, has, like, a... hard clock. Where it's not something that you can just kind of, like... DPS race through, you've, you've got to wait. Like, there is distinct times where you have to wait for things to happen. I'd hardly say it's the worst, though. I feel like, honestly, I think the War Eater might be my least favorite. Just because with the War Eater, it's still, like, really easy to, like, fuck that up if you're not paying attention to, like, where the, uh, where a lot of, like, the, the shit is popping off. An intriguing myth, though I wonder how Nama came to be woven into it. Not like in hand, perhaps. Yeah, honestly, fuck World Eater. <laughs> Like I've had I've had runs of World Eater where it's just like the the main thing that fucked it up for me is that I happen to be standing in the wrong place when one of the attacks that like moves you around the stage happens. It's obnoxious. From here we shall travel to Mol Elo. There we may ask Serena about the particulars of the myth and raise the matter of an alliance with the rulers of the steppe. That's right, they are in charge, aren't they? Technically speaking. Listen, listen, I have World Eater Mount drop. That's all you need. Guess which HW Extreme I still need the mount from. Oh, is it is it Limitless Blue? Whoop. 
strange. Amidst the radiance of your being, I sense a shadow. I pray it is but my imagination. Eh, you know. Tell me, do you notice anything different about the mole? How they carry themselves? That, my friend, is pride. I do believe their victory in the Nautum meant more to them than I realized. So that is Serena. Lise told me something of the woman, but I don't think that we would ever have the occasion to meet. Hi, Serena. You have 27 totems. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yen, hi, Gailed. I'm glad of your visit and the opportunity to welcome a new friend. How may we serve you? There is a matter I would discuss with the Maul. It concerns not only the peoples of the steppe, but of every land in the Far East. Blah, 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 blah. A shard of the shining moon left behind by a wayfaring soul. And you need this to protect our lands. I do. My friends and I wish to find the shard and ascertain the extent of its power. Will you tell me more of the place where it lies buried, this northern crag? That is your wish. In the mountains to the north, there's a cavern called the House of the Crooked Coin. Inside this cavern are pillars of stone that legend holds to be the source of Nama's power. There, I believe, you will find what you seek. Ah, yes, I know the place. Tis a brisk walk from here. And what are your thoughts on an alliance? Should the Empire return, our lands will be engulfed in a storm of conflict, whether we will it or no. If we do not stand together, we will fall apart. This I believe with all my heart. However... However... Among the tribes of the Steppe, there are those who, would revere, who revere Nama above all else. To them, the pillars are sacred and not to be disturbed. Should you proceed as you propose, such tribes are like to spurn an alliance, prompting others to follow their example. That is my concern. But it is by no means certain that the pillars will provide the power you seek. Ere you risk the ire of the followers of Nama, might you not first visit the house of the Crooked Coin? If all is as you hope, we may then consider how best to earn their blessing. I thank you for your counsel. We will do this as you suggest. I have no desire to give offense to those with whom I would join hands. Thank you for your understanding. Though the mole may reign over the steppe today, this decision will shape the days to come, and we would not force others into war against their will. Uh-huh. Nor we. A hundredfold stronger are they who choose to fight their... What? Hold up. A hundredfold stronger are they who choose to fight of their own accord. There we go. Uh-huh. I think one of my favorite things about the Azim Step is, like, you... You've got, like, all the different, like, uh, tribes of the Zela. There's one out there where it's just... They don't have any interaction with anyone because they got like cosmically fucked up for their greed and they're just like yeah we just we're not we, we don't we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to do it we're we're good you guys go do your thing we're just gonna hang out here in a cave <laughs> In a place such as the steppe, where myriad tribes exist side by side, it is important to respect each other's ways, and it would be wise to in indeed to respect the beliefs of those who would gladly render up body and soul to the Dusk Mother. Serena is quite right. Before we seek permission to use these pillars, we should determine if they are suitable for our purposes. The Quill of the Moon. Ishtol is ready to put her skills to use. Curl too full to visit. Tragic. Seems the time has come to put my skills to use. Pray, lead the way to the house of the crooked coin. Yeah, I totally know where that is. Can I can I take part in hunt train? Sorry about your hunt train. Wow, that is a brisk walk. Look at that. Look how brisk this walk is. This walk brisk as hell. Now that is a... It's a fucked up looking tree. Well, it certainly looks powerful. But powerful enough? That, you'll have to ask the expert. Yishtola, how we how we looking? 
Oh, that is radiating. Such an abundance of ether. Are we in luck? We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Azizla from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. She sees the magic and how fucked up it is, but she also doesn't see the ledge. Watch your step, girly. No, she sees the earth ether. So it's fine. Hmm. The earth ether. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. Fucked up. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. Hi. Sorry, I'm looking at Blue Sky. Give me a moment. Okay. We gotta move quick because there is a specific scene that I want to make sure we see on stream today before we finish up. It's the most important scene in this entire patch. Let's go. Most important scene in the game. Well, it looks like I was right about the pillars. Now all we need is permission to use them. That such an abundant source of ether should lie undisturbed for millennia. Tis a miracle made possible by the step's long history of isolation. You found that which you seek, then? Great! Or, hold on. Great indeed is the Dusk Mother's power. If not, less will suffice to protect our lands. The blessing of the other tribes must now be sought. Of course, but which tribes should we appeal? There are many who worship Nama, but none are so fervent in their faith as the Dotharo. Their consent shall be the key. Yay, we get to go see Sadu again. The Dothal. Lee spoke of them. A warlike tribe possessed of unique customs and beliefs. I sense their cooperation will not be easily won. Nay, but it will be well worth the effort. The Dothal fear on nothing. Death least of all. And our alliance will be greatly strengthened by their presence. Let us go to Dothal Ka and treat with their Hatun, Sa Sadu. Think Sadu's calmed down any? No, in fact, she's probably way angrier. Serena's really excited to go see, for us to go see Sadhu. <laughs> Just like, tell, tell Sadhu I said hi. Her lesbian energy is actually increasing.
it's a little disappointing that, like... <sighs> they haven't, like, fully committed to a lot of this stuff. Like, the sense that I get with regards to stuff like Sadu and Serena, or as we'll see later on, Reed and Gaia, um, is that they are going about as far as, like, they're allowed to with establishing them as, like, couples. Um, where it's just like, you can, you can look at the interactions between these characters and be like, oh yeah, they're a couple. 100%. Look at the way that, like, they're talking to each other. Look at the things that they're doing together. The way that they react to the other's presence. But then it's just like, they can't commit to it. And I know the reasons why. But it doesn't make it less disappointing, you know? Hi, Shar. How you doing? wonder whose spirit will find its way into my child's body. I eagerly wait the day when the Hatun is at last able to gaze into my baby's eyes. Despite her fondness for battle, Sadu is an astute leader. If we plead our case in earnest, I'm certain she can be persuaded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Great faith gives rise to great strength, for better or for worse. Whatever it is the Dartharl holds sacred, we would do well to accord it all respect. Hey girl, hey, how you doing? You again. Other matters demand our time, Hagen. Hagen? How is that pronounced again? Khan? I forget. Unless it is battle you seek. Not really, no. Alas, not. Quite the opposite, in fact. Blah, 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 blah. I think it's literally pronounced Khan. Okay. I always forget which consonant is supposed to be the silent one. Hello, hey, Sadu, I'd battle you. Talking, always talking. You say the pillars hold great power? Of course they do. They are the source of Nama's strength. To the Dathal, no place is more sacred, and we will make ash of any who would defile it. Though I see this is not your wish. You see the wisdom of our proposition, then. You will join hands with us? No. <laughs> I said nothing of joining hands. You wish to wield Nama's power to defend these lands, and this I will allow. But for leaving the step to fight the men in iron, I would have something in return. Namely? Hehe. <laughs> oh, I love whatever Sadu smirks. It's my favorite expression she has. Namely, battle with you, Khan. Uh, what? The Nadam ended ere it began. I would face you again, alone, without distractions. Defeat me, prove yourself the stronger, and you shall have the Dotharl as your allies. Surely these are agreeable terms. Well, this is a not wholly unexpected turn of events, though I had assumed I would be the one required to fight. Alas, the Hatsun has made her choice. Shall we dance? Sounds it phonetically, like I'm trying to clear phlegm out of the back of my throat, but starting it with a K sound. And also the correct way when being serious. I have to pretend I'm funny. <laughs> Hello, Goldie. <laughs> ah, it shall be a battle the steps shall not soon forget. Ah, already my soul burns brighter. Prepare yourself, Khan, and await me outside the car. Ah, Ka? I will gather my witnesses and join you anon. Okay. Why are you still here? Go! Wait for me outside the car. I will join you in soon enough. Okay.
Why? Why? What are you doing? Go. Get out of here. Leave. Try as I might, I failed to see the logic in this arrangement. I can but conclude there is none. Yeah, I, Sadu's just kind of like that. Don't worry about it. She has to slip into something more comfortable with battle armor. Isn't she wearing the exact same thing, though? When I was little, I would stride up to Kosetsu, wooden sword in hand, and challenge him. To his great credit, he never held back, and I had many a bump and bruise to show for it. <sighs> Waiting. Let's go. Hey girl, hey. Are you voiced in this cutscene? Please say yes. Yes! This spot shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this Han. It is it's hot. They're both silent. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace. You stand before proud warriors of the Dathal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest. We lay low the strong that we may rise higher. That is our way, the way of might. There is no other. Oh, they did not want for conviction. Just wouldn't worry about it, Yashola. Indeed. It's what makes them such dangerous enemies. And such useful allies. Enough talk! It is time to fight! What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Secrets! All right. Whoop. Pew pew. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, fuck. Oh, cool. Are we done? Okay, hard no. In death do our souls sing. Oh, God. Oh, again with this. Oh, cool. Are we done? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad one of us is having fun. I'm kidding. I'm also having fun. <laughs> Whoop. I'm going to get hit by that. How is the... Hold on. Once more with feeling. A stellar Cthulhu, oh, Chulu. Oh, hold on. There we go. I was hitting the. I was on the wrong crossbar. Oh, fuck. Yep. 
Are you okay? Oh, she's still going. Also, hello, G-Man. I am bleeding. That makes me the victor. Oh, shit. Ah. Okay. Oop. Summoning Meteor... Really? Are you getting off on this? Because it definitely seems like... Okay, calm down. Oh, she's ready to go again. Okay. Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Oh, hey, man. Well, well. The sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. You lost the Nottam. What are you talking about? Yishtola is already tired of this guy. <laughs> Yet what should he find here but a battle to determine the fate of the step? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. I don't think you, we... Doman, okay. You who come to petition the warriors of this land forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. I don't think that's true. Ugh, these words are as wind from a horse's backside. Ew. Plentiful, but your act sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. <clears throat> Insolent child. You will learn your place. Do you guys still need me here, or... Oh, okay. Forgive me, Brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacul, join me. Okay, we're still going. All right. Uh, should we? Do we need to worry about them or? The sun is in good company. We may dance alone. Oh, cool. All right. Okay. Well, you guys have fun. I'm gonna be over here, Do still just doing my thing. You will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim. I was just like, what's that stepping noise? And then I realized, oh yeah, the other guy's a pugilist, so he's got the bouncy stance. Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs, gods, 
I'm turning into her. <laughs> <clears throat> I have not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. I think it's Ishtola that you play as in this. From blood of our fallen brothers. Defeat Magni the Older. In the coming battle, you will fight Ishtola. Alright, hold on. Stone, cure, ether well. Okay. I think, is this, is this the first one where you play as somebody else? No? Oh, okay. I forget which one it is. Oh, right, you fight as Alphano. Oh, hold on. I forgot about that. Ah. Oh. Okay, let's uh take care of that as soon as possible. Well, let's see if we can't do more than one here. He and will be fine, probably. Well, let's just real quick. Ah, that hit me. Damn. Hold on. Oh. How you doing, Hien? Oh, shit. He's okay. So you still stand, but soon you will kneel. Oh. Let's just go ahead and take this one out, I think. Oh, I gotta pop that ether well. Hold on. Keep running, keep running. Oop. Oh, that guy's just leaving. Okay. He was like, fuck this, I'm getting out of here. Bow down before me. Hold on. Tremble before the sun. Oh, it seems like maybe I just need to. Okay. I'm gonna stand right here. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep taking pot shots though. Oh cool. Oh less than ideal. Every step you take, every move you make, the sun sees all. Hey now, you can't make that reference. Oh shit. Uh... 
Aha! Get his ass. Duty complete. Shouldn't you break the middle one because you know where he owns? He owns fine. Oh, you don't have to do more than one. Just get more damage in on Forever Alone 2005. At least homosexual 14 character of Baduga guy. <laughs> Literally everybody who gets so heterosexual, that's why they're so interested in hanging out with only other heterosexual dudes. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Me throwing Baduga, Dartharl, and Ornir cans into a big cage together and letting the steps problems work themselves out. Oh, Pastor. Never have I felt such bliss in defeat. Okay. It was a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dartharl will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. What if I cheated? I cast chain spell that no classes have access to. Your grace. You know, I think Magni would find the answer to all his problems if he tried dick for once. He can't. That'd be gay. Yeah, but an Oranir could get away for get away with that, I feel like. Smile. What does the sun say to that? <laughs> the sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. Come on. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. Get to it, buddy. You. By what are you called? Oh, here we go. <laughs> that little side eye. Why? <laughs> are you... Are you my Nama? But. I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Oh! Little? Somebody called 911. I just witnessed a murder. Oh, and you know Sadder's gonna tell everybody in the step that he got called that. He's gonna be hearing that for the rest of his life. Does it pain you, little son. Crave you salve to soothe the ache. Fire to sear the wound in your heart. <laughs> oh boy. We should probably back off of this. We've wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success.
You stole a having been sent having been sent a dick pic. Well, now, how are you so small? <laughs> Let them have their fun. He's still not recovered as of Endwalker. <laughs> Offended? Not in the least. I'm no stranger to clumsy propositions, and that, believe it or not, was far from the worst I have heard. <laughs> oh, God. Magni's unannounced appearance had me worried for a moment, but it was not his day to shine. Still, I cannot fault the man. I cannot fault the man's bravery. You had not only to contend. You had a oh, fucking goddamn. You had not only to contend with Sadu, but Magni too. Such a fierce battle that must have been. Yet here you stand, triumphant. Having passed such a test, they could not well deny you their allegiance. The mole will make no such demands. Weak though we are, we will gladly stand with you. The step is our home, and we will defend it with all our being. You have my heartfelt thanks. Of all the tribes of the step, there is none I would rather have at my side. God's willing, many more will rally to your cause. I shall send you word when we have answers from all the tribes. I cannot thank you enough, Serena. None of this would have been possible without you. Bow. Still have not recovered as of DT roll quests either. Oh god, that's right. That comes up in those, doesn't it? Desert. Alright, well that is going to be it for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming by the stream. I hope you all had a good time. I know I did. Let's go ahead and snooze that ad while we finish up. Uh, art for the stream... Uh, chat blocker was done by Isaac. You can find on Blue Sky at Knucklebone. That's K-N-U-C-K-L-E-B-O-N-E. -E. Um, does fantastic work. Highly recommend checking his stuff out. VTuber was done by Audrey and B of Team Capital. You can find on Blue Sky, Twitch, Tumblr, VGen, YouTube, at Team Capital. In fact, I believe they are streaming right now, so I think we gonna raid them. Um... Yeah, we're going to rate them. I'm just going to... Magni, the not-owned, will eventually be his title in-game at this point. Magni's going to buy Twitter at this rate. Don't compare Magni to that guy. Magni's way cooler. Like, by magnitudes. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't email Don't email Team Cap. Don't do that. Um, upcoming streams, I'm still not 100% certain exactly how the next couple days are going to play out. I need to kind of work out what the schedule looks like in terms of what's going on tomorrow, what's going on Saturday, what's going on Sunday. Um, but the plan is, is that sometime over the weekend, we're going to do a full beginning to end playthrough of Silent Hill Shattered Memories to celebrate its 15th anniversary. Uh, so I hope you'll tune in for that. Um, next week, uh, Wednesday will either be Hellboy or Shadow of Mordor, depending on whether Molly's available. Um, Thursday, we will be continuing, uh, through the Stormblood patches, closing in on the end and, uh, closing in on the beginning of Shadowbringers. Um, and yeah. That's going to be it. Uh, stick around to for the cat pull raid. And I'll see you next time on the shark stream. Same shark time, same shark channel. Take care, everybody.